uh, good to be here. My name is Marilyn. I'm one of the pastors here at Pearly Baptist Church. And it's a real privilege to be sharing God's word with you as we begin this new year. Now, we often have expectations that the new year is going to be different to the last year. And after the year that we've been through, who would blame us for that? For most of us, it's been a really, really tough year. And we're continuing to look at the book of Isaiah, but we're actually getting to the point, a pivotal point in the book of Isaiah, where the message that God is giving to Isaiah to share with his people uh, changes. Because up to uh, chapter 39, God is speaking condemnation over his people, saying to them, what do you think you're doing? You're behaving so badly. You need to stop. You need to come back to me. And then suddenly, in verse uh, verse 40, God starts speaking to Isaiah words of comfort, words of encouragement. So let's look at these um, words from Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 1. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling. In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So wonderful words of encouragement rather than condemnation. God is saying that the time of trial for his people is coming to an end. The oppression and persecution will finish and God will bring them comfort during this time. The desert that God talks about is the trials and the difficulties that we all face in life. And when he talks about making straight highways in the wilderness, he's saying he's going to remove the obstacles that people face. He's going to make life better. The rough places are going to be made smooth. He's rolling out the red carpet, if you will, and better times are to come, and his glory will be revealed, and it's a time for rejoicing and celebration. His is the voice that is calling to his people who are in the wilderness, not not physically a wilderness, but a wilderness of mess and sin, of oppression and of hurt. And it's God who's speaking tenderly to them, saying their sins have been forgiven. He's coming to restore them back to him and to bring them comfort until that time when he makes all things new. This word from God to Isaiah was a word for those people in that time, but it's also a word for us in our time. When our lives are falling apart and we can't find peace or comfort, humanly speaking, we can turn to God for his comfort, ask him to settle our minds and help us to bring things into perspective. If you've never turned to God in those moments of deep hurt and pain and anxiety, and ask for his comfort, I encourage you to do that the next time you're feeling hopeless. Just ask God to override the negativity and the worry that's in your mind and to bring his peace and comfort into your mind instead. I've done that on a number of occasions when I felt hopeless and I just can't stop stressing and I can't stop worrying and I can't stop imagining the worst. And I'm in that downward spiral where things are getting worse and worse and worse and my worry and my anxiety is making it all so much harder than it need be. And I'm so good at telling other people that and helping them to see that, but so often I don't see it for myself. But when I get fed up with the anxiety and the worry, when I eventually decide I don't want to be in that place anymore, and I turn to God again and again, I felt his sense of peace and comfort. And suddenly things come into perspective and I feel different to how I felt just a few minutes earlier. 
I still don't know what's going to happen. And maybe the worst will happen, and it has. But if even for a short time, I can know that peace that I hadn't known in that situation before, I can have a real sense of God's comfort. His peace can give me the strength to go on and not feel overwhelmed and to stop adding to the issues that I face with worry, which is getting out of hand. I come back to some words that I mentioned in a reflection a while back that I used to speak every day before I got up. When I went off to college to train to be a Baptist minister, I felt completely overwhelmed. I hadn't done any this serious studying like this before. Uh, I was leading a little church. I was completely out of my depth. And then someone gave me this little verse. Well, it's not a verse from the Bible, but it's a little saying. God, help me to remember that nothing is going to happen to me today that you and I together cannot handle. You see, the things that we can't handle by ourselves, we can handle when we invite God into that situation. It's good to remind ourselves that God is there He's going to encourage us. He's going to bring comfort no matter what we face during the day. And when God brings his comfort, he doesn't necessarily take away the issue. He might do later, but he might not do it straight away. It doesn't work like a genie where you get three wishes and the genie has to give you what you want. But God does promise when we turn to him that he'll go with us. He goes hand in hand with us into the trials that we're facing. He'll enable us to come through, no matter how hard it gets and how close we feel to the edge, he will be there with us. The people that Isaiah is speaking to and bringing comfort to, they had to face another hundred years of trouble. I don't want to say that to depress you, but I just want to remind you that God doesn't come through instantly, that sometimes He leaves us in that difficult place. He brings us comfort and he brings us strength and he walks with us because there's things that we can learn in that time. And this is what God is promising through Isaiah. He's still with his people. He wants to comfort them. Good things are coming and good things will be coming for us too. Prophecies often have more than one level of meaning. There was a meaning for those people in Isaiah's time. It's a meaning for them in their here and now. But they also have a far deeper meaning, often reaching across the world and across time for everyone. In Matthew's book in the New Testament, he quotes some of these words from Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. And Matthew says that in this God is talking about John the ba- <coughs> excuse me about John the Baptist who was proclaiming that the Messiah was coming and Matthew says this is referring to John the Baptist as well God was doing a new thing and he sent John the Baptist ahead of Jesus to proclaim what this new thing was that God was coming to make a straight path in the desert to roll out the red carpet to do a new thing to bring us forgiveness of our sins And so this prophecy has a deeper meaning for us as well. It brought comfort to those people at that time, but it brought comfort to other people down the years as well. At the time that John the Baptist was prophesying, the Jewish people were in a mess again. They were occupied by the Roman Empire this time, who though although they tolerated their faith, they oppressed them, they taxed them, Uh, They were not a free people. They weren't able to live in the way they really wanted to live. And once again, they were in that place where they needed God's comfort. They wanted someone to put an end to their oppression, and they thought that God would do this for them. But God wasn't going to do what they wanted. He was going to do something so, so much better. He wasn't going to just take away the oppression and the persecution they were experiencing, which was probably the focus of their prayers, just like so often our prayers focus on the negative and the bad things around us. God was going to give them something so much better, something way beyond their imagining, something not just for them, but for people for all time. 
The new thing God was going to do wasn't release from the Roman Empire. He was going to give them his son, Jesus Christ. He didn't want to just deal with the problems in the immediate. He wanted to comfort his people and to show them that there was something much bigger coming than they imagined. God saw the sin of the people just as he sees our sin. And because he's holy and perfect, he cannot tolerate sin. And so he sent his son, Jesus, as a human being to pay the price for our sin. It would take another human to do that, and that's exactly what Jesus did. He allowed himself to be crucified, and he went down to hell in our place, that we could know how much we are loved by God. He gave the life of his son for our lives. The father and the son in those times, in those moments, were separated for the only time throughout all eternity. As Jesus took the weight of all of our sin, everything that you and I and every other person who has ever lived, he took the weight of that sin on his shoulders. And when he said, it is finished, he meant our sin was paid for. It was done once and for all. We are a free people free from shame and humiliation, free to be the people that God has called us to be, people who know him and how much he loves us and who love him in return. Maybe it would have been enough for the people at the time of Isaiah to be freed from their evil oppression, to be their own rulers. Maybe the people at, that t- at the time of John the Baptist were just hoping to be able to live according to their laws. But God said, that's not enough for my people. The people I created and the people I love, I want them to know true freedom. (coughs) The freedom that can only come in finding me and the comfort that I can give. This time last year, we could never have imagined what the months ahead would look like. I remember leaving the office to self-isolate and taking what I needed for two weeks imagining that all of this pandemic would be over and done with in two weeks and we'd all be back to normal. I just had no idea of what was to come. And it's been tough, hasn't it? For all of us, it's been tough in lots of different ways. I do hope that in all of these difficulties, you've called out to God and known his comfort and his peace. So many of us have prayed for this pandemic to end, and so far God has not made that happen. That's been the focus focus of our prayers. Lord, end the pandemic. If the pandemic had ended, everything would be fine. And perhaps God is saying, I want to do something bigger. I want to do something better than just ending this pandemic. I want you to know how much I love you. I want you to know my comfort. I want you to turn to me. And I hope that you've been able to do that as well. I hope you've been able to turn to God at those hopeless moments and receive his comfort and his strength. As we start this new year, experience tells me not to anticipate what might come our way because we probably have no idea. And if we thought of a million ideas, then probably it would be something different. But what I want to ask us as we begin this new year What is going to be your focus? What is going to be my focus? Are we going to allow the trials and tribulations of this world to overwhelm us? Will we try to get through all these difficulties ourselves? Will we plead with God to take away the difficulties? Or will we ask him to walk alongside us through them, to bring us his comfort, to give us his strength, to show us his love? It is so often in the times of difficulties that we connect to God most strongly. So we don't want the difficulties to happen. But when they are happening, what is to be our focus and what are we going to think about them? We can try to get through this next year by ourselves in our own strength or we can give it all over to God who longs to comfort us and strengthen us for each new day. Should we just stop and pause for a moment? Maybe we don't even want to reflect on the year that's gone, but maybe we want to stop 
and think about where our focus is going to be for the coming year. Are we going to try and do this ourselves or are we going to allow God to come in and bring his comfort into our hearts and our minds? Heavenly Father, we thank you that whenever we cry out to you, you always hear, you always listen. And you may not answer the prayers that we bring you in the ways we want you to, <clears throat> but we know, Lord, that you walk with us, you bring us your comfort, you bring us your love, you bring us your strength. So that's our prayer for the coming year. Heavenly Father, Lord, strengthen us, draw us closer to you. May we know your love. May we stop in those moments of despair and invite you to fill us with your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.